What's up guys, it's your boy Sebastian Envy, the strong style nerd, the strong style cinephile. Coming at you with something new for my channel, admittedly something to stir some content, give me a chance to geek out and talk about some things I enjoy when I'm not on set with my own productions, on set with somebody else, or I'm not going places and kicking faces in a wrestling ring, which I'll be doing again this weekend with CWF for another CWF taping. Be sure to check that out. As of this week's episode of Arrow, we no longer have the pleasure of seeing Mr. Terrific, so let's all take a moment pour one out for old Curtis Holt. I mean, you can, I won't, as I'm really not sorry to see Mr. Adequate depart from Star City because he never lived up to the name Terrific. Curtis first appeared in season four working for Palmer Tech. His job at the time is to create an algorithm for the company higher-ups to use to determine who to fire, and ironically, and for drama, he was set to be fired as well. But of course, things worked out. Curtis was brought back on after helping Felicity solve the villain of the week, and eventually, being brought in to help Felicity decipher messages she was getting on her phone, which were from the lost and thought dead Ray Palmer. Curtis would of course suit up, I mean, of course he would, when Oliver brought in the recruits of Curtis, Renee Ramirez, Evelyn Sharp, and Rory Regan, good old too overpowered for these plots, Ragman. There would be some drama and shenanigans that would put Curtis in the field more often than not just getting his butt handed to him, showing us that just because he's a genius, Olympic decathlete, good with pop culture quips, and after what felt like forever armed with his T-spears, doesn't exactly mean he should be out there fighting for justice. And of course, I could go on about Curtis and his divorce from his husband, Paul, which was caused by his vigilante life or the stupid Arrow Civil War plot. Him working with Felicity on a tank company, his realizing after Ricardo Diaz almost killed him that he belongs back behind a desk, but I'm sure there'll be other Mr. Terrific retrospectives out there from others. Curtis to me was just a dude Felicity. He was there to save the day as the plot demanded and make awkward ill-timed jokes like Felicity, like Cisco. It's the bread and butter of these CW shows, you know, to have these sorts of defined roles on the various teams. I mean, they're like MMO groups where you have to have a tank and a healer and DPS and a troller. On the CW shows, you have to have those people fill those formulaic roles. I mean, I could gripe about it, but it is what it is. It's what we've come to, to know and love and be used to, so, you know. Echo Kellum is gone, and I can't fault him for wanting out. Four years is a while on a show, and there are tons of other opportunities out there for people that you don't exactly want to miss. Kellum himself was recently quoted as saying, It was my idea. I have kids. I have a 12-year-old. And it was just starting to feel like I should be back home more. It just boiled down to family, and also because I just wanted to try a couple of creative ventures in my life. I'm working on music, directing, and writing now. I still love acting, but it's not something I'm looking at as the top thing of my career anymore. I'm looking at my career in a different light. I feel him on that, definitely. So kudos to him for moving on. Personally, I think CW shows need to really start trimming their ensemble numbers for tighter storytelling and more opportunities to really just drill down and explore certain characters so we're not dealing with them having to juggle uh, these actors who have to be sent here or there with a one or two line offhand explanation as to where, why they're you know, not in the episode. As we've seen lately with Cisco on The Flash, which of course we already know, Valdez is on his way out after this season. And Kellum says Curtis isn't done as a character. The door is open to return, yada, yada, yada. I think we should almost expect him to be in Crisis on Infinite Earths because that should bring in everyone. Everyone! And if you're listening, writers, it better include my Legends of Tomorrow as well. And those are just a few of my thoughts on the matter, but more importantly, what do you guys out there think as we come to the end of the tenure of Mr. Terrific on Arrow? Are you happy to see him gone? Are you... Sad to see him go. When do you think he's going to pop up again? Me, I'm still sticking to my theory that it's going to be in Crisis on Infinite Earths because that needs to have everybody who has ever been on a CW superhero show just to make it big and epic and a big spectacle that I'm hoping, praying, and sacrificing to every deity that I know that it will be just blow everything out of the water. It just, it, it has to. But what do you guys think? Take a second, comment below. Let's get some conversation going. I'll be back soon with a new video. In the meantime, like, subscribe to the channel. You can see short films. You can see wrestling action. I mean, I make movies and I kick faces. What is there not to love? So talk to me. Let's geek.